Welcome everyone to Discourse. That's Rita. This is Tony. And today we're talking about On Loving by Lily Nagy. So, how long did it take you to read this book? Uh, from start to finish, probably like two full days. But I read it over the course of like a couple weeks. Yeah, me too. I think it was like, it took me about two weeks. Um, but all together, probably about two days of reading. Because yeah. if, you, if you haven't noticed, the book is very thick. It's like... It's about 570-ish pages. But all of it is really just very smart introspection and exploration of love and how one can get there and how it changes somebody's life. And the first thing that struck me about the writing style was how smart it was, right? Mm -hmm. Like you could tell that the author is very educated, uh, has thought about this a lot. Uh, there, there's tons of quotes in there to, to different like... Uh, Poets and I mean writers and things. Yeah, which I thought was great because not only is it entertaining mm -hmm. for the fictional story, but it's also educational because you're learning about different poets. And um, you know what's funny is you can compare this to a book that has almost no relation to it, Ready Player One, right? In that book, he makes tons of references to oh, uh, yeah, from 80s, the 80s and, nostalgia, right. just reference over there, reference over here. Uh, this book does something similar, but That's it's good. just lots of literary references mm -hmm. instead. Which I thought was so amazing. And a lot of it was from Persian literature or poems and things like that, which I mean, here living in the States, I feel like I don't really get to explore that as mm -hmm. much or it's not something that's pushed on you like in school and things like that. So it was so nice to read it and it's beautiful and it really uh, ties in with the book and the story. And yeah, life. I think it felt more exotic. Yeah, right? for sure. Because I Iran can... is definitely not somebody or somewhere we've been. Uh, right. So hearing about it and you're right, that's something actually along with all of the quotes to poets and literature, we also get a backstory on Iran and Persian history. Yeah. I think she says in the book um, mm -hmm. that Persia or Iran is one of the, or Persian culture mm -hmm. is one of the oldest cultures yes. in the world, mm -hmm. right? And again, you learn all of this great history in the book. Um, and it's something I, I like learning about anyways, is I like learning about history. So when I was reading the book, learning about history, also being entertained by the fictional love story going on, um, I appreciated that I, I felt like I was getting smarter. Right, yeah. <laughs> and then also her having a background um, you know, in the medical field, her also putting in a lot of her experiences medically, um, you know, like, helping deliver a baby that was oh my gosh that was insane that was. because that scene what what happens she meets her grandfather mm -hmm. spoiler alert uh her grandfather passes away although not really it's sort of in the beginning of the book her right. grandfather passes away she now has to go to their funeral so they drive to the funeral get into a car accident a snowstorm that gets into an accident and then are rescued by uh strangers mm -hmm. they go to their house spend the night right when she wakes up she has to help some lady deliver her oh, baby, baby. <laughs> all in the span of like maybe 12 hours yeah with no tools nothing to help aid her in the delivery of this baby and then it being a breach birth which is difficult in itself, having nothing with you in the middle of nowhere in a storm with someone you can't even speak to. She didn't even speak the language because she didn't know Farsi. Right. So it was like, how can I explain to you what's going on with your baby and your situation? You both could die. And and Dean's no help. I have he to help you. Hard, I know. And, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I Dean's think he was still there. sleeping, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> he learned about it in the morning. Hey, Dean, wake up. I'm kind of delivering right? a baby here. Yeah. I need some assistance. Yeah, but she delivers the baby and... I mean, just because she's so knowledgeable and knows what to do at the right moments, because every moment counts in a breech birth and everything you do, every little turn of your hand or fingers matters. It's and she, the, the character in the story is a uh, surgeon, right. or she's a doctor at least. Yeah. And I think that's where it confused me because when I started reading this book, I thought it was a true story. Yeah, me too. You know what I mean? I thought it was based on like the author's uh, yeah, life. Nice. So I had to check a few times like, are you sure this is not a true story? Because <laughs> yeah. it feels really real. Yeah. Um, but I think uh, one of the things it helps with is that the author is, I believe, Iranian, yes. right? Although she lives in Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, the character is Iranian. Uh, she, the character is a doctor. The author is also a doctor. Mm -hmm. So they share... Uh, I, I'm a lot assuming of yeah. a lot of similarities. Mm -hmm. Which obviously helped her pull 
from to put into the book. Maybe she went through some of these things, like some of her patients that inspired some she of the had story. To, she had to deliver a baby right. out in the <gasps> middle of Iran. No, no, no. Just randomly. The snowstorm, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, and I really enjoyed that part. But as authors, they, they often put um, their own life experiences in the stories, right? Yeah. So I, I do wonder, like, which experiences uh, she pulled from real life and which right. ones were just made up okay. because all of them are very entertaining. Yeah, and I could, I could feel like when she was describing and talking medical terms, I was like, yeah, this is her life, like for sure. And that's why, I had to, that's why I had to check multiple times. Yeah. I was like, are you sure <laughs> yeah. this is not a true story? And it's also written kind of like a memoir, right? She's, yeah. It's her journal and she's writing to her children, telling her children kind of her life. So it's basically her retelling her life story to her granddaughter who's going through like a heartache at the moment and she's trying to help ease her pain. So she's telling her life story, which is the entire book, but it's within a span of a few hours, basically, with her granddaughter. She stays up late just to kind of talk to her and ease her heart and soul. And then uh, the ending is basically her journal. She kind of rewrites it, I think, yeah. and then they find it. In her because daughter. there's moments where she's telling the story and I, I'm kind of forgetting that it's like a yeah. memoir, a fictional memoir. Mm -hmm. uh, and then um, when you get to the end, you realize again that it's this is a memoir and she's kind of like, well, I don't know if I want to give away the ending, but um, yeah, the, the ending is very good. And I'll say that this novel is takes up the entire span of this lady's life, the right. fictional character in the story. Mm -hmm. It takes up the entire span of her life. And I think that's why the book is so long because it's basically somebody's it's life. life. Yeah, it's her life yeah. story. Everything besides her younger years. Right. Like everything leading up to her becoming a doctor is kind of out the window except for when she speaks of her father when she was younger and how he loved literature and how I mean that's how she comes to learn and love it um, her adoptive father she really so. loves literature and uh um, because he did I enjoyed all of the quotes in there and I think you have a favorite quote right or at least this book is uh the title of the book is based on a poem a poem by Farouk for us to... you're murdering it I know <laughs> and one thing too that I really enjoyed about the book because all the names and all the is so foreign to us I had a hard time like pronouncing it but it still sounds so interesting and so like exotic and yeah. you know feels, beautiful yeah it feels authentic yeah for sure so I think it's Faro Faroza so it's on loving tonight from your eye sky stars rain on my poem my fingers spark set ablaze the muteness of these blank pages. My fevered, raving poem, shamed by its desires, hurls itself once again into fire. The flame's relentless craving. Yes, so love begins, and though the road's end is out of sight, I do not think of the end. It's the loving that I love. Why shun darkness? The night abounds with diamond drops. Later, Jasmine's intoxicating scent lingers on the spent body of night. Let me lose myself in you till no one can find my trace. Let your dewy sighs fevered soul waft over the body of my song. Wrapped in sleep's silk, let me grow wings of light. Fly through its open door beyond the world's fences and walls. Do you know what I want of life? That I can be with you, you, all of you. And if life repeated a thousand times, still you, you, and again you. Concealed in me is a sea. How could I hide it? How could I describe the typhoon inside? I'm so filled with you, I want to run through meadows, bash my head against mountain rocks, give myself to ocean waves. I'm so filled with you. I want to crumble into myself like a speck of dust to lay gently my head at your feet, cling fast to your weightless shadow. Yes, so love begins, and though the road's end is out of sight, I do not think of the end, for it's the loving I so love. It's very emotional, again, uh, from a different poet, but the novel continues that exploration of love and how much one would do for love, mm -hmm. right? Because the character in the story begins with never having loved. And I think Dean even asked her once, have you ever had a love like mm -hmm. I had, right? He lost his love. Daphne. And he asks her and she says, no, really, right? She's honest with herself. She says, I've never felt that. Um, it's something that I think she felt like she was missing. And she starts and, to find it and is kind of scared when she finds it. I mean, yeah, and she does um, kind of say that in school, like a teacher had asked, like, well, how do you define love? You know, and for her, because she had never felt it before, she had no definition because she had no experience with it. So throughout the book, she has different types of love, whether it be a, a significant other or a friend or a family member, um, which is yeah. nice to see because it's not... 
I mean, yes, it is a romance and she's stuck between two people that she loves, but it's so much more than that. It's just love in its purity. You know? Yeah. I did like the dramatic romance of the story. It was very mm -hmm. like lifetime-ish. For sure. But around that, we get, like I said, a, just a deep exploration of love in its different forms. Right. Um, and that's what I really appreciated. And so we start off with Dean, but then she falls in love with another person. Siva. So, I mean, and they're both like different people. Who did you like better? Siavash. Definitely. So at first, his character to me, I thought he was kind of arrogant and a little like, I'm so amazing, how do you not love me sort of vibe. You but, should kind of love me, right? right. Like, look at me, I'm amazing. And then even when he like professed his love to her, when, um, when they, they first went to Iran, right? When they first met, he told her like, I love you, I'm always gonna love you. And when you figure that out, I'll be here and you can come back to me and I'm waiting for you. I Which I thought you. was too much, but, <laughs> but eventually... Tone it down. Yeah. I love you and I'm always going to love you. Again, a reflection of the poem that you just read. Exactly. Right? Because love is so intense like that. And he even says himself, he he's never felt love like that before. And he knew it when he met her. He knew it from the moment he met her that that was it for him. She was the one for him. So he knew I'd wait a million years for you and I would choose you again. And again, it's always you. So he was willing to wait. He was a very patient man. And he, you start to understand, you know, um, his love for her because he's very honest about it. But also, I mean, just the, the things that he did for her or for love. Because he loved her so much, he was willing to sacrifice his own body twice for her. <laughs> Um, you know, which is amazing because you know he was just, he was true and he was a kind man. So that's why he's my favorite character for sure. So intelligent. So, so he's the favorite of the two male leads or yes. your favorite in the book? My favorite in the book. Yeah, I really liked Siavash. I didn't have the passion for him that you did. <laughs> um, well. But uh, I think you secretly married him in another life. I did. <laughs> <laughs> so she also has a dramatic but short relationship with her grandfather, which is really an extension of the relationship she tried to have with her parents that had passed away. Mm -hmm. And I felt, I, I bring that up because I feel like that echoes throughout the novel. Really, For sure. Right? I mean, it was her parents, her birth parents were so much in love. And even though um, her grandfather disapproved of their relationship and then they ran away and then things happened that their love continued throughout her life but then also like that tragic there, every moment was so there seems tragic. to be a bit of tragedy throughout the whole novel kind of like a Shakespearean tragedy yeah. kind of deal going on even though she falls in love and she she is happy with these people I just felt like there's a bit of melancholy throughout the whole book lots of twists lots of turns yeah, and you have plenty of space to do it in because again, yeah. this is a long novel. Yeah. Um, and at first I was reading it and I was like, how, how, what are we going to get into in this amount of space? But quite what, a lot, quite a lot. And like I said, it's an exploration of her entire life. So if you really want to follow like one person through their whole life and all of their experiences, then this is the novel you want to read. Right. Because not only is it a good romance novel, it's a good fictional memoir. Yeah. And then it didn't even end at the end. It, her story kind of continued for a bit, even after she stops writing about her life. So, yeah, I wanted to follow her children. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, which is interesting as well because she struggled to learn about her parents. She didn't, and I think maybe that's why she wrote this memoir. She didn't want her kids to struggle to know who she was. I mean, it's always that thing. It always comes back to as a parent, you never want your kids to live the life that you lived. You always want them to have a better life or to live a happier life. I mean, maybe she kind of left this for them to be like, you know, make sure when you love, you love it completely and fully and you give yourself to it. Um, yeah. And you just become vulnerable because it's an amazing thing. And also in the book, she references like, um, love is not without sacrifice, which I thought was so like, I mean, it kind of blew me away. I mean, even me knowing that, once I read it, I kind of felt like, yeah, that's so true. Like, just because you love someone and then you lose them that heartache, like, oh, you shouldn't just not love anyone. That's why you love someone so yeah, much. Yeah, I think you're right. I think the one thing this novel does well is that it makes statements like that, but the reason why it affected me so much is because then it gives you examples, right? right. Through her story yeah. of how that applies, mm -hmm. right? It's not just people telling you uh, a bunch of things about love. It's This book does a great job of telling you and then showing you right. how that applies in somebody's mm -hmm. life or how it's tested in somebody's life. Um, man, Siavash was great, uh, I, but I liked Dean. How can you discount him? 
Um, again, I really he wish. Was so he was way too like, <laughs> like, oh, I'm so yeah. sad about my life, which I get. He had a very tragic, like a lot of things that happened to him, causing PTSD and things. But like, you found love, chill, you know, move on, <laughs> live your life alone, fully, yeah. which is what Daphne wanted for him, and she told him that, like her dying wish. Yeah, Rose kind of says like, you lost her, but now you're here with me. Yeah, like, what about me, man? I love you, <laughs> you know? Which, yeah. you know, it's hard to us. compete with a dead woman who someone loved, you know, immensely, but... Yeah. But it's the same with... Then the rules got reversed, you know, with Rose and Siavash, so... Dean kind of got a little payback that way. They have a weird relationship towards the end, right? It's like a weird kind of triangle relationship. But I love that they're so adult about it in a lot of ways. I mean, there's, would like being a husband and then having someone's ex like lover always in your life and always like trying to steal them away. It's kind of uh, yeah. intense, but being- You gotta be very assured of yourself. <laughs> yeah. You gotta be very adult. Have a and... good foundation, you know, but I kind of love that. I, yeah. I was like, I aspire to be like that. Be adult enough to understand like someone's feelings you can't help it, you know? So you want to allow people the space and the time to really reflect on themselves and to live their true life. You never want someone, especially someone you love, to live a sad life just because you're selfish and want them to yourself. That's so, the whole purpose of love. So you would be uh, best friends with your husband's ex? <laughs> No, and that's why I aspire to be a, yeah. an like, adult I wish someday. I was that strong, yeah. but I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so you like, wait, so who did you like? You liked Dean more? I liked I Dean, like? um, but you're right. He was a little too emotional, a little too melancholy too for me. Yeah, a little too broken already. Maybe if Rose was his first love, man, that would have been passionate. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but yeah, Siavash kind of stands out in the novel to me. So intelligent, right? And that's why I think this whole novel is just really intelligent. I think even after the first chapter of the book, I was like, all right, this is an intelligent writer, intelligent writing. You can tell that the author um, is smart. Yes. And she knows what she wants to talk about. Mm -hmm. And the novel was really focused on that. Yeah, and I mean, even the first page, the little poem that she has before you even start reading the book, really sets the tone so well for the book. I just read that and I knew I would love the whole book. Yeah. So I read it, I was like, yep, this is the book for me. I this really is, enjoyed it. Yeah, this is gonna be an emotional <laughs> ride. <laughs> yeah, I, super. I uh, like, went to my reading corner and read and then my wife would come in and be like, what are you doing? I'm like, nothing. <laughs> I'm not crying. I'm just reading a book. I add, and honestly, I cried at least four times throughout the story. Dean cries a whole lot. He cries way too much. I mean, men are allowed to cry, but my God. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, give it up, man. He was very emotional. He was, which... Which is understandable. It is. I mean, love is a, it's a hard thing and having loss in your life and it's tough for anyone. Yeah. So. How, ba how so badly beautiful. do you want to go to Iran? Now? So bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, it sounded so beautiful and I truly felt like I explored a bit of that, which is so great. And it's something you always look for in a book or a story. You always want to travel somewhere, whether it be into space mm -hmm. or whatever it is. And it's a different, it starts in a different time frame. I think it's like the 70s, 80s. Yeah. So this is a really great uh, romance novel that takes you out of the norm. I really felt like I, I was transported to Iran with her and to Tehran and stuff. And I could imagine the Rose Garden and I really felt like I was in an, another land. I really recommend this novel. I think it's, it's very good. Anybody who likes a romance novel will love this book. Anybody who wants uh, a romance novel that's a little exotic. Like I said, we explore a different culture. If you're in America or Canada, it's a different culture. Beautiful, um, yeah, for sure. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm.